Gavlan will, Gavlan deal. Hello everyone, this is Ben with Evil Sunbro, and today we are going to be discussing Lonesome Gavlan. Now I know lately Gavlan has gotten quite a bit of love in internet memes and funny pictures, but I think it's long overdue that we sit down and discuss just how he ties into the lore of Dark Souls 2. The Future Press Guide lists Gavlan as being Chief of the Gurm. At this point, we don't know the hierarchy of the Gurm race, but I think it is pretty safe to assume that being the Chief is probably a pretty big deal. As for the Gurm themselves, they are a dwarf-like species that dwell in the underground caverns of Drang Laic. At some point in time, they were driven from the surface by humans that deem them as being impure. This in turn led the Gurm to develop a very understandable mistrust of all surface dwellers. While most, if not all, of the Gurm stick to their underground dwellings and guard them very violently, Gavlan seems to have no problem flitting here or there, happily wheeling and dealing with anyone who has the souls or the gear to barter with. We first encounter Gavlan in an abandoned building on the far side of No Man's Wharf. His appearance in that particular location could signify a couple of different things. One is that like the other undead before him, he was meant to be transported via ship to the Lost Bastille, never to be heard from again. Another, and this is the reason I tend to believe, is that he had simply wandered into the area to do business with the Varangian sailors that patrol the wharf. Perhaps upon his arrival, he found that the sailors and other creatures in the area were none too friendly, and this is probably the reason as to why he is hiding out in an abandoned shack. The second time we encounter Gavlan, he is hanging out in a cave within the poison pits of the Harvest Valley. Now, why would Gavlan be hanging out in such an off-the-beaten-path location? Maybe he took a wrong turn at Huntsman's Cops. Perhaps he was making his way to the Iron Keep. In all actuality, the reason is because as a vendor, Gavlan is most useful for the poison items that he sells, and he is simply there to replenish his stock. Also, there is going to be a high demand in that area for that precious poison moss that he sells, and travelers would be wise to part with a few souls before they succumb to the poison mists. With his supply of consumables and ammunition fully replenished, Gavlan then relocates to his final resting place within the cavernous halls that are the doors of Pharos. It is also here that we come face to face with the hollowed remains of what was once the mighty Gurm race. In their hollowed state, the Gurm are even more hostile towards outsiders, and while it would seem that they are content to lumber about, mindlessly carrying out their meaningless tasks, the Gurm will drop everything to attack any intruder that wanders into their realm. Now, what does this say about Gavlan? Like his kin, has he too begun the hollowing process? It could be that bartering for souls is how he delays the fate that has befallen the rest of his kind. We learn from his in-game dialogue that Gavlan wants souls, many souls, and we also know that souls may mend his ailing mind. All things unwanted eventually find themselves beneath the surface of Dranglaic. Some driven, some discarded, some by treaty. All have their own sad tale, and while Gavlan may seem jolly and humorous, his story is no less tragic than that of any of the other lost souls of Dranglaic. You see, Gavlan carries the weight of his entire culture. All of their deeds, all of their history will fade beyond memory, with only Gavlan left to hold on to them. 
It is this reason that the title he is given in the game is so fitting. Because although he is surrounded by the remnants of his people, Gavlan is truly lonesome indeed. <laughs>